Hey guys, Drew here, real estate investor and realtor. If you guys have been keeping up with my videos, uh, you have probably seen this project that we've been working on in Smithfield, North Carolina. I wanted to go over this project along with the challenges and mistakes we've made, as well as provide an update. We bought this three bedroom, one bath house back in October, 2021. The market back then was heating up in terms of home prices and competition from both other investors and home buyers. It was getting harder and harder to find and buy good deals out there. Interest rates for loans for investors range from nine to 11% for short-term bridge loans that were used for flips to loans that were used for uh, rental properties with a 5.5% rate. So the initial plan for this Smithfield property was to do an investment strategy called Burr, the Burr method. This strategy is where you would purchase and fix up the investment property. And after, you done, after you're done with the renovations, you will rent it out and do a cash out refinance to pull out all the money you had invested into the property. We purchased this property for $95,000 using a hard money loan. The after repair value was determined to be about $215,000 to $225,000 with an estimated repair cost of about $50,000. I use a combination of costing out large budget items and compare that with similar projects we've done in the past. For example, we done the flip of a similar size home in about the same condition for about $40,000 in repairs. I added about 25% more to that budget, knowing that there were a few more expensive items, line items at this house, like the windows were not standard size. It may cost a little bit more. Also that there could be some savings by keeping the hardwood floors, plus other items here and there. Altogether, we felt that a repair budget of $50,000 will work with this project with a four to six months timeline. Normally we will work on about two to three flips at a time. I find that, I find that manageable since we do most of the work ourselves. However, because deals were hard to come by over the last two to three years, I was snatching up and buying any deal that came our way. We ended up buying eight houses over the course of two to three months uh, in 2021. Since we were transitioning our investment strategy from doing flips to burr, I figured it was just a matter of managing the project over a longer holding period before they were rented out. This was the first and probably the biggest mistake we, we made. Our renovation team isn't structured or positioned to scale and handle more of a more than a few projects at a time. Additionally, the availability of quality subcontractors is still a frustration to this day, and we and we didn't adjust for that. We did look into hiring a separate construction crew to do the bathroom and kitchen remodel for this house. However, their quote came back at forty thousand dollars for just the kitchen and bathroom, and that was most of our budget without doing the rest of the house, such as the roof, HVAC, and windows, because we thought that we could do the work cheaper ourselves, we decided not to go with another crew. In hindsight, that was also a mistake because the number of projects we, we acquire all at once and not being able to scale up, we should have delegated more of the work, even if it was going to cost us more with repairs because we learned that time is also money when it comes to flips and renovations. When we started a renovation and demo the, of the bathroom, we discovered that the house has significant structural and termite damage. Unfortunately, those kind of stuff should be expected with tearing into walls of older homes during remodels. That discovery and finding out that the windows will take about three to four months to, to be delivered end up taking up closer to six months. We put this Smithfield project on hold while we put our focus and resources on a larger project in Durham. Again, we are struggling because we are not able to scale to work on all the projects at the same time. Plus, the project in Durham was our largest renovation we ever done. Any delays with that project caused delays with all our other projects, including the Smithfield project. Another challenge we experienced, in addition to a quality shortage of labor and subcontractors, the cost of construction materials has increased significantly over the last year or two. Ultimately, we end up going about $20,000 over budget, mostly due to increased material costs and unanticipated structural repairs we have to make to the house. The four to six months timeline turned into a 15 month project and with the longer holding period, our holding costs end up being about $30,000 altogether with another $11,000 in finance charges. Another mistake we made with this project and others in our portfolio is that we assumed that the market condition would be the same as it has been the last few years. So I wasn't as concerned with the delays as much because the plan was to keep the houses as rentals anyway, and eventually do cash out refinance to pull the money out that we invested in them. Unfortunately, the 5.5% interest rate that we plan to have to do the burr ended up disappearing as the market shift over the last six months or so. When it was time to do the cash out refinance, interest rates were coming in about seven to 
With the increased money we, we put into the project with both the repairs and holding costs, along with the higher interest rates, we couldn't do a true burr by pulling out all the money we put into the project. One saving grace with this project was that we purchased a house at a great price. So even with the increased renovation and holding costs, we still had options to either sell a house and make some money or, or break even, or rent it out without doing the cash out refinance and, and get some cash flow. The total cost of this project ended, ended up being about $206,000, including the $65,000 in cash and the rest being a hard money loan. Refinancing $206,000 with a 7 to 8% interest rate would have made the project more than what we could have gotten for the monthly rent. However, refinancing $141,000 at, at 7 to 8% would have been able to cover it with the rent and with, with, with some cash flow. We did place the house for sale first to see how the market would, would react. With a list price of $240,000, we did receive a good amount of interest in Sean's, but the offers we received would have only had us make a minimum after factoring closing costs, which wasn't very exciting to us. Another saving grace was that the market rent for this area increased from $1,200 per month to $1,500 over the last year. So by keeping $65,000 in the house and refinancing it to a rental loan while renting it out for $1,500, our cash flow is about $500 per month. This is account for taxes, insurance, and other expenses. So basically our return is about 9% with keeping, with keeping it as a rental, which is decent, but also not very exciting, but it does provide us with options later. If interest rates drop and become more favorable again, we could do a cash out refinance like we originally planned, but more of a delay cash out. Or, or we could consider selling the house again if there's appreciation. With a lot of things in real estate and businesses, you're going to encounter challenges and make mistakes. It's, it's important to learn and pivot if need be. Also, this project shows the importance of buying real estate at a great price that would allow you to have multiple exit strategies. I bought all our projects in 2021 when the market was heating up but still at a price that I thought were great deals. However, in 2022, I didn't see many good deals out there as buyers and investors were, were competing for a limited number of properties and driving the prices up. I only bought one property in 2022, which was in a commercial lot with a residential house that has the potential of becoming a great rental investment. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and learned something from it. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll talk to you guys later.